Alright guys, hey, how's it going? I'm going to be painting my first Limbo Eternal War mini from the game itself. I've painted a few of the resin miniatures leading up to this, but this is my first one. And how could I not pick a Mokrim? Malkrim? Malkrum? Mokrum? Ma Ma whatever. The, um, the freaking bone golem dude. And uh, so a lot of things that I see on some of the bases in this game is that it, they're, they're, they're sculpted and it's great, except there are parts where it's not sculpted, it's like just perfectly flat. So what it does, I just added a little texture there, no big deal there. Then following up with my standard basing for kind of the rocks or tiles or anything like that, Mechanicus Standard Gray as a base coat, it's a very good gray. I like it because it can get darker and it can get lighter. It's one of those in-between uh, colors that just, they darkens really well with some non oil, lightens really well with any other gray. Um, it's just a really good solid color. I'm gonna go ahead and do the the rim here now because this is such a big base that I had to like putty it on the uh, Citadel holder there and then flayed one flesh a new color for the channel and I'm excited to use it I'm actually not gonna use it as flesh though. I'm gonna use it for the base color of some bones Now um, what I want to do with these bones eventually is I wanted to kind of have so so the the lore around him and even his like move set in the game is that essentially he's uh, he when he kills somebody he adds them to his uh, like his body and then one of the skeletons from his body pops out and is now like a, a minion for him to command kind of thing. And so he's constantly replacing and changing bodies, so there are going to be some that are older and some that are newer. And so what I ended up doing there is just, um, I'm going to dirty some up towards the end and make them a little bit darker. But otherwise, um, uh, it's just going to be skeletons. And so uh, this is one of the nice minis, actually. If you ever want, if you want a first mini to paint from this, I highly suggest this guy, just because, first of all, he's freaking sweet. Uh, but also just because he has, uh, like... 90% of him is one color, right? Now, I still spent like six hours on this guy, so uh, forgive me for painting slow, but it is really nice that in one sitting you can paint all this bone, all that base, and you feel like you did a whole lot. It's like, wow, he's like almost done. I mean, he's not, depending on how much you do, but, um, and, and you know, when when it comes to, if, especially if you're new to painting miniatures, when it comes to painting miniatures, it's ju you just stop whenever you're, you feel you're done. Uh, you can always do more. You always, always do more. Um, in fact, one of the biggest skills, I think, in miniature painting, first of all, water your, your paints down, but second of all, is just take your time and know when you're happy with it. Whenever you're happy with it, you're done. That's all you need to do. You could go and add more colors. You can go and add, do all sorts of stuff, but otherwise, you just do what I'm doing here. Agrax Earth Shade all over it. I do bone pretty much one way, and that's uh, the bone color, and then Agrax Earthshade, and then the bone color again, and that's typically it. Normally I do Screaming Skull, this time I did Flayed One Flesh, you'll see what I do. I do actually do a little bit more, because I want some variance. I'm going to have a little bit of a, um, more of a, a, like a long time dead bone white, like a little bit more whiter, right, like it's bleached bone kind of thing. By the way, am I the only one that thinks he's pulling this out of his butt? Uh, his, his weapon's literally attached to him in, in a very weird way, but I, I can dig it. I'm not I mean, I'm going to tell him any other way. Anyway, yeah, so just, you know, have a nice big brush and go to town. Uh, you don't need, nothing else is really painted except the base. You don't really have to worry about too much. Agar Shade isn't even going to hurt that base too much because you're going to put some non oil on it anyway. So just go to town and have fun throwing wash everywhere. It pops out the texture so much, it's insane. I love stuff like this, like the bone or the rock or anything like that that just just pops out detail really, really quick. Um, it, it, it's great. Now, while we're doing this, I'm going to explain what I what I wanted to do a little bit with this miniature. And so I, I wanted his blade to be red, um, but I didn't know exactly how much I was going to do. I was going to add a little bit of blood. My initial thought was to put some blood on the, like, the scythe and everything, and then splotches of blood kind of throughout, like, like he had some, like, bloody bones that still had maybe a little bit of meat on him, and just kind of really kind of nastify some of the skeletons. Uh, the more I thought about it, though, and the more I looked at the bone people that he spawns out in the game, they don't really have that. They're all pretty much just bone, and so I just went with bone. And, well, I mean, I'll, I guess I'll explain more later. No one oil over everything. You're going to have to touch up this rim anyway. At least I did, so no big deal there. Agrexer Shade out again. If you were smart, you would do it all in one go. I am not, and I didn't plan that Agrexer Shade, but decided to do it anyway, so put that on the dirt. Just to darken up a little bit so that dry brush we put on afterwards has some nice contrast to it. Additionally, you could get some on the rocks, it's fine, it'll actually help just blend it together. All 
All right, now we got the Screaming Squads. This is the normal color that I do. This is a little bit uh, different than the Flayed One Flesh, uh, but it's not much. It's just like, this is a smidge different, but I liked the contrast it gets. As you can see from the Agrax Earth shade on the Flayed One Flesh to the Dry Brush, it, it looks really good. Now, this is not my final kind of highlight highlight. Um, this is just for contrast, so I'm gonna do it everywhere. And uh, as you can see, I'm a pretty heavy dry brusher. I know some people that just like feather the crap out of this stuff, but I, I don't know. I've never, I've, I've never gotten the results I wanted fast enough, so I just normally mash it. Now I have elfic flesh. Now, as you can see, this is wider, and I'm going to mostly do this on the top of him where like some daylight would hit him kind of thing. Uh, so the difference between like a lot of people do like lighting from like a 45 degree angle on his left or some junk like that but that's not daylight lighting daylight lighting lights kind of everywhere right everything's bouncing around and all that you might have a a specific lighting but there's still highlighting elsewhere it's not just all shadow um, it's not just night and day there and so if he is out in the day then he's gonna have some highlighting kind of everywhere but this is more on just kind of the tops and it's very subtle. It'll pop up more as I add some more contrast, but for now, we're gonna move to Gehenna's Gold and put in that crown. Now, I did not pick him because it has a crown, but I do like the crown. So, uh, the, again, I really appreciate the lore in this game, uh, just because there's a whole section on him and how he's wandering around, and there was this fallen king, and um, I liked how he has like this kind of... Uh, uh, I, I wanted the crown because it looks intact, doesn't look damaged or anything like that, it's straight on his head. So I wanted the crown and I wanted the uh, cloth on him, even if it's tattered, to look nice, to look clean, to look um, slightly royal. Uh, and so that's going to be the only thing clean on him. So right now, I'm painting the sword, as you can see. He's got a few of them, he's got one on the ground as well, and one on a shield on his leg in the front. So don't forget those. Um, but... And then Lead Belcher on, on the guard and hilt of all of them. But uh, these these are going to be all mucked up. Uh, I wanted just the crown and just the, the kind of tattered cloth to be a, a, a hint of his royal self. And otherwise it's all just nasty and, and uh, old and grimy and, and bad. Lead Belcher is fantastic, by the way, because it still darkens on known oil, but it's plenty dark on its own. Uh, which is nice, so you can darken it, you can lighten it. Again, I like those in-between colors, so I can I can do both. Um, and unless, and I'll do this with the cloth, so pay attention to that, and I'll talk about it, but um, if you're not using a wash, you want to start dark, and then just have multiple highlights up. So speaking of which, here we are, black red, and it is actually quite dark. It actually looks kind of, uh, kind of light here in this light, but it's definitely a pretty muted red. It's a little desaturated. Uh, which I like, and uh, it 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 doesn't look like super um, like a, like like a really almost dark burgundy or anything like that. Um, but so it's it's definitely in the red category, but it's pretty dark. Uh, we can highlight this up quite a bit, and we will. This is going to be a fair amount of the uh, time on this miniature. It's tattered and wound even in his uh, skeleton here, so don't forget that. Those don't look like bones to me going the other way. That definitely looks like the kind of the cloth, so take your time here because you have already dry brushed and highlighted and uh, base coated and washed that skeleton. So just, again, I got my little brush out here and take my time. By the way, this is a red grass uh, brush, and I must say I actually really like it. For a sable uh, fur... Uh, brush, which I typically don't like. The reason I don't like them is because they're expensive, and if you ever brush anything that's rough, they will lose their tip, and then they're just kind of terrible. I like the synthetic brushes that are so nice that they keep their tip for a lot longer, and then because they're so much cheaper when they do go bad, I just toss them or keep them. I'll be using one of those later, actually. I'll show you that. Um, and and I, don't, I just don't feel bad about it. This, you know, costs more and it's nice. And if you're more gentle than I am, it'll probably be good. I, this has lasted so much longer than my Winter Newtons. It's lasted so much longer than my Rosemary & Co. It's, 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 seriously, it's actually a pretty good brush. I'm very happy with them. I'm also using their wet palette. And it's amazing. Like, I love the, the uh, sheets. In there it really helps out as you can see I'm highlighting but it's just a tiny bit of highlight what this highlight is by the way 
is just to get it to the really the red color that I want right this is red and I wanted this kind of bright red it almost like it doesn't fit on him right because he's, he's changed to morph so much and if you notice it's in his middle and then going to his left and then his weapon which I'm gonna make all bloody is also to his left so he's gonna have all this red on his left side and in the middle so what I wanted to do I wanted him to be kind of reanimated somehow uh, kind of like maybe magic or something like that and magic is typically either green or blue glowing stuff right and with the red and the warm colors being on the left and his outstretched right hand uh, I when I was planning him out and I was trying to think of what I wanted to do with him I figured well you know what let's go ahead and you know actually use blue because it's a cool color so you have this cool blue with this warm red and have the blue be in the middle and then on his right and just kind of I don't know hopefully have a nice flow to it additionally on all the uh, miniatures that have this kind of stonework I've put a little blue tint to it for Limbo Eternal War so he's gonna have this little bit of a blue tint as well on the bottom I think it'll really help kind of frame the miniature a little bit and give them some nice contrast by the way am I the only one that thinks pure red doesn't look pure red it looks little orange to me uh, no, just very slightly it's very much red but pure red I don't know about pure red I don't know what it'd be on the RGB scale or anything like that but it seems very sports car red if not a little bit more orange than that maybe there's a little bit of yellow in there still um, I don't know pure red just seems a little bright but it's a great great highlight and as you can see I've been highlighting a ton when you don't do a wash when you're not using caribou crimson then you're gonna want to build those highlights like uh, again it is multiple colors now we have the orange fire out we actually have the orange out we're just going to do this on kind of the extreme edges just to give that sense of volume so you have that sense of depth as it waves and flows you're going to have that peak and then that valley and so you still see that pure red and you still see that uh black red and you still see all those uh the dragon red all the like kind of uh colors kind of sm and, and again they're all watered down and super smooth also, when you are highlighting, uh, it, it's going to look brighter just because it's reflecting the light that you're using to paint with. Um, once it stops reflecting the, uh, the paint because it's you know not wet anymore, it'll dull itself just a little bit. So keep that in mind as well. But uh, this takes some time. Again, I mean, look at the texture on that. And so you're kind of having to do, what, three highlights if you follow what I'm doing here. But um, I mean, I, I really like how it came out. I, I'm really happy with it. Um, I'm not one typically to do exaggerated contrast, uh, which means my miniatures typically look better closer up than farther away because they like, kind of dull a little bit. Um, but but I do what I can to kind of maybe meet in the middle here. Uh, we're now going to be painting all of the shields uh, with this natural steel, but just the inner parts of the steel. I'm going to do the rim slightly different. This was a compromise. So first of all, these looked kind of like the Rose Knights. Uh, shields a little bit and I know the rose knights obviously might have some rose colorations to them and again I'm doing the red I was gonna do that blood um, or any kind of you know kind of muscly pinkish purple tint to some of these skeletons but I decided to go pure skeleton so a compromise was to do the rims a little bit different now this natural steel is a little bit darker than the silver we put on there and a little bit lighter than we did on the ledge belcher, lead belcher. So it acts as kind of a nice little highlight and a nice little shadow, both in one. Now I've mixed some dragon red into the natural shield by eye. I couldn't tell you how much it was. It just kind of didn't tell I was happy with it. Um, and then I'm now painting with this. Um, they make some uh, like metallic medium that can turn any color metal, uh, but that's typically a much stronger color. So if you want it a little bit muted, you're gonna have to mix it, and you totally can. I wanted it a little muted. I don't want something too cartoony here. Just a little bit of a tint to it, and I think this does a good job. I'm just doing all the rims of the shields in this, just to change it up a little bit, make it not so plain, add a little bit of color throughout his body, uh, I think it does a pretty good job with it. I'm gonna do some rust stuff to it later, uh, which looks awesome. I love weathering metal, and that'll add even more color to it. I think bring it all together. Again, take your time here. Uh, you've painted everything around this. Let's, let's just be careful. All right, now we have known oil out again. Yes, I could have waited to do the uh, f uh, the base with the known oil while I did this. No, I did not. 
Uh, that's because I suck at planning, apparently. But, you know, that's all right. I try not to take out the color more than once. If I, I don't know if it's a personal goal of mine or if it's really an efficiency thing. I just like being like, okay, now I'm doing normal. Now I'm doing this. And you can't always do it. Sometimes there are different orders and, and you, you, you can't. But here, I could have totally waited to do the, the uh, base or painted these and then done the base afterwards or whatever. But anyway, the note oil I'm also adding as a shadow to the lead belcher just because it's so much darker. And now finally caribou crimson, but on the weapon, it's going to look a little pink. Um, I'm actually going to do one of these off camera. So there's going to be one here and then one later. And as you can see, I'm not totally sure about my final result here. This is kind of where I think you should free yourself to be able to kind of play it by ear and take a chance. So at first I was just going to do the middle part. And as you can see now, I've painted all of it. I was listening to the inner part of it, muscly, like somehow it was bone with like this muscle inside. But then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do the whole freaking thing. So I do the whole scythe, and I'm like, and then I'm gonna do the whole like spine butt uh, chain thing that he's got going on here. And now rust and dry rust. I forgot to film the rust. I apologize. You can see it there though. It's very orange. And then what I like to do is the orange rust and then the dry rust, which is kind of like a brown and it actually has some grit to it. And when you layer it like that, the, low, the light orange and then the rust over it, I think it just looks glorious. I freaking love it. It looks great. It dulls the shine almost instantly. It breaks up that bright orange. It just lets it look all spotted and speckled and terrible and weathered and uh, again I love it and I like having these weathered first of all so that they're not so clean um, they're not the most detailed uh, swords I've ever seen either but also just because I wanted it to seem like this dude lives forever he's not dying everybody has tried to fight him and he has kept going and he has all these remnants of past attempts which I thought would be kind of cool Okay, now flayed one flesh out again. This is the lighter version, so it's a big contrast, and I'm just doing a little bit of dry brush just to make it look a little bit like a bone still. So it's gonna have this layer. You're still gonna see the pink beneath it. You're still gonna need to see the, the kind of pink uh, in the recesses, but otherwise it's gonna look a little bit more bone-like. I'm gonna be covering it in blood. Now again, at this point, I had not planned on covering it all in blood. My plan at this point in time was actually still just to put like drizzles of blood. Spirit Sewn Red for some gems on the crown. I did not put a wash on the crown. I probably should have. If so, I would have done Reichlin Flesh Shade. It's a very brown red wash uh, that looks quite good on gold. Any reds or browns look good on gold. Kiko Agrax Earth Shade with the red theme. I probably would have done the red. And now a new color for the channel again, Baharoth Blue. Ba ba Baharoth, they make up these words, I swear. Anyway, uh, it's a very bright blue, and as you can see, I have it completely watered down like a glaze, but I'm almost using it more like a wash. I'm letting it pool, um, at this point, I'm like actually putting it in the pool. And again, I have not planned on how much glow I'm going to do yet. In the head, I kind of had, right, because he has that encasing there, which is perfect for a glow. On the on the, on the the fist, so I didn't know if it was just going to be this inner glow, if it was going to like just be this huge glow. Um, as you can see, I ended up putting uh, quite a bit in there, uh, but I allowed myself to kind of, I, I mean, I hadn't planned it ahead of time. It's whatever I felt was right at the time, and that's what I felt was right. But you got to get it in those eyes. I did not do the mouth. Um, and uh, I just kind of wanted the, the glowing eyes. I thought it would look uh, cooler just to have the two eyes. Agrox Earth Shade out again to darken some of these. So these are going to be, I guess, the more fresh bones that have been recently added. And again, you could have maybe done a Reichland Flesh Shade, maybe added a little bit of red in there. I debated, but I just went with the Agrax, um, mainly because I guess a, two, a few things. With the bright blue and the bright red and the eventual blood and all that, I wanted the rest of him to look like bone sure but not really like i guess stand out and i don't mean that in a bad way i don't mean like i didn't want him to like look con contrasting or interesting or anything like that i meant i i wanted it to be the canvas that all the stuff is in so i wanted it just to be a mash of bones and then you notice the swords you notice the shields and the magic and the scythe and the cloth and the and the uh glowingness and the the crown and all that kind of stuff um, it's one of the reasons I do such muted bases here, too. I don't want the base to be what your eyes drawn to. I want it to really be these kind of pops of color on him. Uh, and so I just went with the Agrax or Shade. I don't want to change and add too many layers of color, though you totally can, and I'm sure it would look glorious. I, I debated this a while, actually. I really did. I wasn't sure. In fact, I, at one point I was thinking I might even dry brush in some color. 
uh, you know, add a little bit of, uh, you know, red into my dry brush and do it that way. Okay, Mechanica Standard Gray and Gray Blue mixed. Again, custom mix, couldn't tell you what it is, just whatever looks good to me. Um, as you can see, the Mechanica Standard Gray with a gray, a gray blue is a very muted blue, uh, therefore a very natural blue in my mind. It looked kind of like a nighttime style blue. So at this point he would be like uh, highlighted from like the moon glow or something like that, I felt. Um, and I, I, again, I just think it looks great. I did end up adding a little bit more gray blue, which you're gonna see here soon, just to uh, kind of pop it a little bit more, and it won't be quite as heavy of a dry brush, but uh, just to pop the contrast slightly. So here's just like, it's not that this is just gray blue, it's a little bit more gray blue added to that mix of gray blue and Mechanica Standard Gray. Just to give it a little bit more blue, a little bit cooler look to it, as you can see, now I think it's looking a lot um, cooler in several different ways that that word can mean, but uh, just color uh, temperature wise cooler. All right, now I got orange brown and that's gonna be the highlight for the dirt. Again, you could have made this any color dirt. I figured an orange brown might fit a little bit into that red theme, especially I think it might contrast out a little bit with that blue that I just put on there. Uh, it can just minor things. It's just a brown, you can do whatever, but I did really want this contrast on there. I thought it would be fun to, to play with. Okay, so now I have that new blue out again and I'm just, again, uh, kind of letting it pool a little bit so it's, it's still not fully opaque, it's a little transparent, so adding a second layer solidifies the color a little bit more. Uh, so I'm just doing the inner workings here, as you can see, just the inner portion. It's just going to kind of um, concentrate and get brighter towards its center. Same thing here, putting it in the eyes, then kind of in those ribs again, uh, that kind of frame of his face. Just And as you can see, that, that second layer really helps solidify that color and adds this gradual increase or decrease of glow. Now I've added some white to the blue, and again, I'm painting just specific parts here. It's very watered down. Um, it's looking brighter than it will, but th the idea is you have this like extreme kind of inner glow, which is what I'm going for now. So it's it's just kind of the inner portion here, and it really helps give th what I've washed shape to, because there's no dark color to kind of contrast. So I'm doing light color instead. Again, in the eyes, and again, just at the very inner portion of that ring. And this is just to, uh, again, just, just kind of help uh, make that seem like a glow. Uh, this is typically how I do OSO or object socializing. I don't know how everybody else does it. I'm no expert. I tend to do washes um, or glazes and a lot, sometimes I'll even like highlight extreme and then just use like an actual wash, but it's whatever. Mechanica Standard Gray is out again just to bring back that base rim. As you can see, I got some orange on it and whatnot, so I'm just kind of making this a nice solid color. You would be amazed. Do, do, paint, paint your rims. You'd be amazed what a nice crisp rim on a miniature does for the whole painted miniature. If it's messy and it's nasty, you would be amazed at how better it'll look with just a really crisp, nice, clean colored rim. Uh, it really does help. All right, now this is another first. Again, I tried a whole bunch of things. I hope you guys appreciate that. If you did, be sure to let, be sure to let me know. Uh, this is some heavy gel from Vallejo. It's like this silicone stuff. Um, I, I'm happy with how it turned out. I wanted like these globs of goop that was just kind of disgusting on here. Um, I, anyway, I, I, I plan on improving. This is a game with the first time and I'm so happy with it, but uh, it, 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 they were a little bendy. I think I may have scraped them off a little too soon or I didn't put them on a flat enough surface. And so the, as you can see, they bent a little bit. I ended up playing around with it some. And I think I could have actually put it underneath instead of on the side latched on like that. And maybe it would have been a little bit better, but um, otherwise I'm pretty happy with it. It's also great to add texture uh, as well because this will harden up and, and kind of create this really cool texture. So I'm just adding kind of globby bits to different parts here. Now, one of the best things to do, I feel, for an OSL is actually some shading. Uh, just again, to bump that contrast up. So here's some Drakenhoff Nightshade, and I'm just putting it around the glow. So there's like this kind of, uh, just this blue hue that's not quite as light. Um, but again, very, as you can see, it's barely in my brush. I'm not really putting it on there hard. Um, right at the tip, so it goes from dark 
to light and I this as you can see really helps pop it out it really I think sells the effect more than just the the, uh, the, the wash did or the glazes did All right, now that he has been varnished with a matte varnish, Blood for the Blood God, you do want to do the Blood for the Blood God afterwards because otherwise it's going to lose that shine and that blood look to it. And again, at this point, I have not decided to do the final look. So this is, I'm just painting what I globbed in and I'm just painting like little streaks of blood. Brushed on blood like this will look different as you can see. Um, I'm just kind of bringing it down there and this is all I was going to do. But then I figured, you know what, I have this really old dry brush because I never throw away my brushes and it's all nasty and so I'm going to dip it in there and I'm just going to mash it around and I'm going to make the whole thing just this bloody disgusting mess. And you know what, I think it turned out great. I Not only is this fun to do, but it's also disgusting and satisfying and really cool. Um, I ended up putting some of it on its base too, like it dripped a little bit while it was down, you know, being pulled out from behind him. It just completely disgusting and awesome and I love it. And, and again, it's not something I had planned. It's something that just kind of came to me as I'm messing with the miniature, as I'm seeing how it's going. And I think that's really important. And here he is. Here's the final version of him. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed that. I loved painting him and uh, I like showing you guys kind of my paintings and my thought process behind it and all that kind of stuff. And I cannot wait to play with him too. That's going to be freaking awesome. Uh, you'd be amazed at how much painted miniatures just make a game so much cooler than it already is. Uh, I, again, those those the rust on the, the shields and stuff, I freaking love the blood. I love... Um, very happy with how he turned out. Uh, again, if, 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 if you have painted any, if you've painted him or any other miniatures from uh, Limbo Eternal War, please share them. Either send me uh, a, a comment with a link or send it to me via like, you know, email or uh, Twitter or Facebook or something like that. I would love to see them because again, you can paint them however you want and I'm excited to see what you guys do with them as well. Guys, thanks so much for watching. I always appreciate you being here. Thanks so much to my patrons who make this all possible. It is through their support that I am able to make these videos in such a uh, frequency and quantity and quality that you guys have come to expect. So thank you so much for that. If you'd like to join them, link down below. If you don't like Patreon, there's a YouTube membership button, join down below. If you don't like either of those, you can turn an ad blocker off and you don't like any of those. Thanks for being here anyway. No, seriously guys, I appreciate you being here. You guys make such an awesome community and I'm proud to be a part of it. All right guys, have a good rest of your week and I will talk to you very soon.